Hey guys, it's Nikki. Um, I was thinking today, first of all, happy Easter. Also, we think that you may have had an extra set of eggs that you did not hard boil for Easter and die. So what better time to teach you how to make an egg sandwich? Um, we kind of took a poll and decided what kind of eggs we wanted to make. And we got an overwhelming response of one person, Josh, who wanted to learn how to make the best egg sandwich. So I don't cook. So my fiance is going to take it from here, Michael, and he's going to teach you how to make the best egg sandwich there is. Enjoy. Hi everybody, my name is Michael. I am Nikki's fiance, and I am going to teach you guys how to make the best egg sandwich in the whole wide world. Um, so we've got some ingredients in front of me I'm going to go through so you know, you know, you can make a list of everything you need to make this. It's very simple, very easy to make at home, and only takes a few minutes. All right, so let's start with some of the ingredients. Number one, we've got bread. You can use any kind of bread you want. Um, I like a little bit of a crafted bread because it's a little thicker and it helps the sandwich have a little more heartiness to it. We're going to want eggs, of course, and for a single sandwich, you're usually going to use maybe two eggs. If you want a big fat one, you can use three eggs. Um, you're going to want to have some butter. I like real butter. It has a better flavor. And some non-stick spray for your pan, which will make the eggs move around the pan better, not stick. Then cheese. So you can use whatever kind of cheese you like. We've got Gouda, Colby Jack, and a Swiss here. I think today I'm going to use Gouda cheese. It's one of uh, Nikki's and I's favorite cheese, so we're going to use Gouda. But you can't go wrong with the cheese. You can use whatever you like. And of course, gotta have some bacon. Bacon gives it the really, really good flavor. So we want bacon, you want salt, give it a little extra flavor. And then of course you need the tools. We always wanna have some towels handy because it's very important. A clean kitchen is so important when you're cooking because it keeps you organized. You don't wanna make a big mess because sometimes you can get confused about what you're doing. So clean it behind yourself and then get a plate ready for your sandwich so you have that prepared. And then we're also gonna need a skillet. You can use any kind of skillet. Non-stick is usually better so the eggs don't stick to the bottom of it. And then a spatula. And then something that you might want to use is an apron to put over your clothes so you can protect your clothes from any kind of extra splashing from the eggs or butter and that way you can stay clean. Uh, so I think we're just about ready to get started. Hey guys, one of the most important things you need to do before you start cooking in the kitchen is you need to wash your hands. Uh, especially with everything going on right now, um, we want to make sure that we stay very clean. So I'm going to take a little bit of my antibacterial hand soap, and we're just going to wash our hands really, really good. I know they're teaching you guys out there to sing songs, and make sure you do it for 20 to 30 seconds, but just make sure you scrub real good, you know, grab your fingertips, get, a, get your fingernails really good, get between your fingers really good. Nice and clean. Rinse your hands off. And I'm just going to grab a paper towel, get myself all dried up, and now we're ready to cook. Hi. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to toast our bread in the toaster because it takes a little bit longer, and you really want to pay attention to this part. It's real easy sometimes to forget about your bread in the toaster and sometimes it can get burned. So we want to pay attention. So come on over here. I'm going to show you how we do this. So here's our toaster. One of the most important things you want to make sure you have a setting on here that can toast it really, really, really high or low. So I always usually like to put it right about the middle so that way we get a nice, perfect toast on it. So we're going to take our two pieces of bread and we're going to stick them in the toaster and we're going to pull this down and it's going to start toasting. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a little trick with the butter. Because sometimes when you pull butter out of a refrigerator, it's really hard and it's impossible to spread on your toast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my butter. Make sure you never do this with the foil on the butter package because it can cause a problem with the microwave. Always take it out of the foil and put it on a little glass dish or a plate. I'm going to stick the butter in the microwave. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to set it for 10 seconds. And I'm going to hit start. And what that's going to do is that's going to soften our butter so it's a lot easier to spread on the toast when we pull out so we don't gouge a hole in our toast. And here we go. And it's just perfectly softened. So now all we'll have to do is just slide a knife right in there and it'll be perfectly soft. See how soft that is? All right. All right. Oh, the toast is perfect. 
There we go, we got our toast. We're gonna put it on the plate. We're gonna bring it over. And now we're gonna use the soft butter that we put in the microwave. And we're gonna put butter on our toast. And spread it across. You can use as much butter as you like. If you like more butter, you can use more butter. Um, it really does enhance the flavor of the sandwich and it helps everything stick to the bread. So I'm just putting a little butter and there we have buttered toast. All right, everybody, we are going to preheat our pan and get it ready before we do the eggs because it takes a few minutes for that to happen. So I'm using a gas stove. With a gas stove, um, I'm gonna use the number setting of a, between maybe an eight and a six. You can use an electric stove, it doesn't matter. I would say maybe a, between a medium and a high setting. So I'm gonna turn the stove on and I'm gonna get my number right and then I'm gonna take a little bit of a nonstick spray and I'm gonna spray it on the pan, just to make sure it's nice and slippery and I'm gonna put it on there and I'm gonna let that heat up. All right, now we're gonna scramble our eggs. We've got a little glass bowl. You can use any kind of bowl you want. We're gonna do two eggs. So we're gonna gently tap the egg, squeeze it gently and let the egg fall out of the shell. And we're just gonna sit this over here and then we'll grab the other egg and crack it. Gently let it go right into our little bowl. Set the shell aside. I'm gonna take just a regular fork and you're just gonna sit there and just scramble these eggs up really nice until you have like a solid yellow color. Just keep doing it till the yolk has blended with the whites and it's just a really solid yellow. And you can take a look at it. If you see like it's not completely blended, just do it a little bit more. It just takes a few minutes. The more you do it, the better it's gonna be, but it doesn't take very long at all. All right. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my two pieces of bacon into the pan first, and I'm just gonna get them a little bit hot. These are pre-cooked bacons, so it doesn't take very long. I just wanna get them you know, a little bit warm. So they're ready to go on the sandwich. I like using that pre-cooked bacon because it's so much faster than having to cook bacon all the way because it does make sort of a mess. So this isn't quite as messy. So I'm just gonna take these now because I just warmed them up a little bit and I'm gonna actually grab a plate right here to sit them on. I'm gonna put them right here and they'll be ready for us to put into the sandwich. So we're gonna come back over to the stove. And now we're gonna take our eggs that we scrambled we're gonna pour it in the pan. All right. So what I like to do the eggs, why they're like this, is I like to take my salt, and I like to salt the egg while it's in the pan, so I don't have to worry about it later. A little bit of salt. And now we're gonna use our spatula and just sort of push all the eggs into the center of the pan. I'm gonna to try to keep it a little more flat. I don't want it to be too thick, so I don't want the sandwich to be too fat. So just sort of flip them over. Moving it around, doesn't take very long at all. Just let those scrambled eggs start to harden, flip them over a couple times until they get to the texture that you like. Some people like their scrambled eggs a lot more firm. Some like them a little bit loose. So it's just a personal preference how you like it and you can do it however you like. These are just about perfect. So let it get a little bit more firm, a little bit more. All right, that's just about perfect. I think we got it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do now, before we bring the eggs over to the sandwich, I'm gonna take two pieces of my cheese. I've got Gouda, and I put one on one side of the bread, and one on the other side of the bread, because I like it to be extra cheesy, all right? So now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come over and grab my pan, and I'm gonna decide, you know, how many eggs do I need? So we've got, might do it in two layers. I'm gonna take the spatula, I'm gonna let that drop right there, and I'm gonna take the other half that I cut, I'm gonna put on the other piece of cheese. That way both sides really get nice and melty. And then we can take the bacon and we can put it in between like this. I'm gonna put that bacon right there and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna just put it right on top of each other and let that settle in and let that cheese get nice and melted. And there you have the most awesome egg sandwich in the world. Really, really easy to make, but the real test, of course, is gonna be when we eat it. So I'm gonna have Nikki come over here and she's gonna try it out.
All right, guys, now that we finished cooking, one of the most important things of a good cook in the kitchen is making sure you keep your kitchen clean. So as soon as you finish, don't just put your dishes in the sink and leave them there for somebody else to clean. Make sure you clean them yourself. So, you know, if you just finished working with your pan, you want to turn some water on, take your antibacterial soap, put it in the pan, grab yourself a nice clean sponge, scrub it really, really good. Make sure you get all the food out of it. So it's all the way clean. And if it's a nonstick pan, it's going to be a lot easier to get it clean. We got it all nice and clean and you can sit the pan in the sink to let it dry or you can take a clean towel and you can dry it off but really important make sure you're a clean chef keep your kitchen clean it's considered for everyone else in the house thanks okay everybody here's a real test mm. good you know what i think i want some too hold on mm. Mm, how good that's good. All right, guys. Go. We're going to finish eating. Have a great Easter. See you next week. Bye. Th thank you so much. See you soon. Bye.